And welcome back. Today we are flying out the Donye 335B2. It's the 5.7 version with the way too many guns. And the reason I flew this thing out was to just get an S bomb plane with too many guns and hope that I can just get the event done as quickly as possible. And that's exactly what we did. I ended up with a 9 kill game without landing, accusations even, a lot of chat salt. Basically the whole Shazam. I didn't expect to get this much out of it, but you know, I'll take it any day of the week. So here we are. With a video on the absolute shit brick that is the Donye 335 and this thing I mean there is no real way to fly this thing I just try to be as suicidal as possible I'm just pushing head-ons and I'm still trying to dodge them of course but I'm just being as aggressive as humanly possible trying to do as much as I can in the early game and if I die so be it but this thing basically only works on the early game because the longer the game goes on the worse this thing becomes it's pretty fast but that's all it really has going for it and of course the amount of guns that you have it doesn't turn particularly well it doesn't climb particularly well it doesn't really do anything particularly well other than of course deleting everything that decides to fly anywhere near your nose here we go we stall out we flip over and down goes the f82 if you think about buying it the footage i have for you right here is pretty situational like if you face someone that knows what they are doing b51h's f2g's all that good stuff you are not going to be doing much. The thing is, almost everyone, and I don't know why they do it, almost everyone I run into is hell-bent on full committing with you. And the problem with this is, not that you won't get the kill. The problem is that you can't really dodge them, so you're kind of forced to just dodge a little bit. And if they keep shooting, you can't really pull back in. But you're forced to, because if you just dodge, you are also just going to die. And you're better off trying to overpower them with your shells than hope that they are going to miss you because very often or more likely than not they are not going to be missing you and if you get touched at all in this thing firstly i advise you to go to the police and show them on the door where they did touch you but if they did you are probably looking at some pretty bad damage this thing likes to be set on fire this thing likes to get oil leaks and this thing really likes to get black wing roots and all of these things make this plane because it's already not that great to begin with it doesn't turn very well doesn't climb very well so if you get hit in those compartments you are done. But the main issue is not that you can't head on people. Because you are going to get the kill out of it most of the time. The problem is that if they commit with you. You just ruin each other's game. He is going to die. And you or me in this case. Is probably going to be looking at an RTB. And if you are damaged in the Donye 335 and people notice it. You are not making the base. They are going to full send for you. Because they see a free and an easy kill. So you just ruin both each other's games. Except the other guy doesn't actually get anything out of it. Other than the satisfaction of him knowing that he probably annoyed me a good bunch. So how do we go around this? Well we just make sure that we are above people. And we make sure that our positioning is good. Because at the end of the day this thing is not very great. So you have to fly in other ways than with the performance of the plane. So we dive on the Yak-3. It's a Yak-3P. He's basically stalled out. He can't really do it. So we just full commit him. He can't even pull in if he wanted to. J6K on our right and a Spitfire above us. So I decide I'm just going to pitch up for the Spitfire. He's going extremely slow. He notices us a little bit too late. And you might outclimb me. You might outturn me. But you need to put yourself in a little bit of a position there. To actually make use of those advantages. He doesn't. He flies through our guns. And if you fly through the guns of this thing. Well I don't need to introduce that fact. You are absolutely back to the hangar. We turn back in on the J6K. That tried to pitch up for us. He's going way slow at this point. And we just hose him out of the air and that's the first three kills and there's six more to come with ammo to spare because this thing has way too many 30 mils you're looking at the 350 of them and they're all pretty high velocity you can also run the ground belts they still work versus planes and you can kill basically any ground unit except for the heavy pillboxes with relative ease and as we are diving on this absolutely helpless sea fire i'm gonna say thank you to all my patrons this one is for you this is absolutely amazing shot. Damn. You're really getting your money's worth here. Nowhere on YouTube would someone have hit a shot like that. So we just use all our speed here to get out of the area. LA9 seems to be triggered by us. So I'm going to bank away a little bit to see if I can create a little bit of separation. Because that yak 3 u on R6 is looking mighty painful. Luckily he breaks off to go for a teammate. He then starts engaging some AI. And I'm alone on the map with this LA-9. I'm just going to cut it out. Because all I'm doing is just fly into a very shallow climb. To use all the speed I had. Turn it all into altitude. And then we turn in. The Yak-3U is in the background as you can see. 
And we are gonna go sideways to bait this LA9 into pitching up for us. Because right now it looks like he's catching us. It looks like he's going to get within gun range. But he's not taking into account that he's actually just cutting us off. We are going much faster. Well, not that much faster because we put it all into altitude. But we are still faster. We have a little bit more altitude. And if you put those two together, you're looking at an energy advantage of about 700,000 and 320 kilocalories. And this guy must be starving because he really wants those calories. And he's just absolutely throwing it away. He stalled himself out for that one shot. And because he did that, he's going to die right here and now. At least he won't be hungry anymore. And even though the LA9 outturns us, he doesn't have any energy to actually turn with us. So we end up outturning him, despite our airframe being much worse. Because without energy, you are not gonna outturn anything. And this makes every plane in the game an energy fighter, I know. Even that just a massive hot take. But without energy, you can't kill anything unless you got gimbal turrets. Or they are parked on the ground and you fly into their guns. But hey... Who would do that? Well, I know three people that I will link on the top right right there. I'm thinking about going for the C-File. Yeah, but he's not really a threat and he's going for the Junker. So I think to myself, Yak3U needs to go. Definitely the biggest threat in this lobby. The Yak3U, below like 3 kilometers, is gonna absolutely rinse my ass. And I'm not really having it. At this very moment, I thought to myself, this guy just stole my 10th kill in the long run. Because I was pretty confident that I could win this one. The thing is... He actually saved the game by killing that guy, so instead of 6, I ended up with 9. So, thank you for killing the C-File. We're diving on the Yak3U, he's getting within that AA range, almost. I'm going to get a very slight shot on him, and then he turns around. And this is crucial, I turn in, and we just click him out of the air. Very lucky, I mean, it's left properly, it's a good shot. But it's lucky that he took that fight. He could have very easily just flown straight to the airfield, which is what I expected to happen. But he didn't and he turned out to be kill number six and you must be wondering where are these accusations are gonna come from well you'll see them soon enough first we fly across the map to this bomb point and we are gonna click on the b6 now the b6 is also one of those planes that are extremely dangerous but it's also super slow and if you crit it at all mostly they just go down by themselves as long as you hit one of the engines it's one of those planes that can barely stay afloat with both of them running if you kill one of the engines, it's very likely to crash. The thing is, I didn't give him any oil leaks. The only leak I gave him was a fuel leak. So he's just going to end up going RTB. And I could kill him right here. The thing is, I will sacrifice a lot of altitude to actually deal with this guy. And I don't know where the other two guys are. And they are both in a squad. So that's kind of, kind of problematic. If I dive on this guy right now, I'm sure to get 7 kills. Or at least very sure to get 7 kills. There's plenty of ammo to shoot from range. And he's already messed up. But I need to get the Tempest and his squad mate out of the air first. If I actually want to win this game. So I'm going to go for the riskier play. Which might net into getting less kills. But the reward is that I might win the match. So we go ahead on with the Tempest. I'm diving on him. I'm going 540 IS. And he's slightly climbing. So he's nowhere near that speed. So all I have to do is dodge the head on. And if you have a big, big speed advantage. You can very easily do so. so we go straight up. We drop the flaps. And we are going to fall right on top of him. And he does kind of the correct thing. He shouldn't have taken that fight to begin with. And he doesn't. And he tries to run away. And he goes to his B6. And his squad mate does the same thing. They go for the B6. So to stay in their gunner coverage. Which is pretty smart. Very very annoying. Because that thing is basically a mobile AA platform. And the Tempest decides to just fly straight. I have high velocity 30 mils. Yeah, not a great idea. I then climb a little bit again. And the Key 94 as well as the B6 finally come out of their base. They were just rearming. I accused them of uh, camping a little bit in the chat. They weren't. Still 8 was pretty respectful. If you are watching, thank you for being so. He was just waiting for the B6 to come out so that they could stick together. Gleaves, however, well, he called me a hacker because I killed him when he didn't move his plane at all. Other than, of course, in a straight line. So right now I'm diving in. I see the B6. He's very slow he's very low so if i crit him at that kind of altitude he's probably instantly dead so i'm gonna bank a little bit i'm gonna dodge his shots and i'm gonna shoot from long range i hope i get a crit in i do he's gonna be pretty badly messed up from that the thing is he has the gunners of the tu4 not something i really want to deal with so i shoot him again i get another hit in the key 94 is going vertical he's trying to cut me off i however notice it on time and i just click him out of the air and that's matchbox number eight and the Key 94, I call this thing bad. 
that thing isn't much better. He really could not do that much. He has very good guns and you'll get a video on the Key 94 pretty soon here. But that thing is trash. Absolute trash. And if you have flown the Key 87 and been in the same boat, the boat not very good. B6 is flying straight. He's trying to dive. I don't have much ammo left. I'm going to shoot from range. I miss it. 22 rounds left. Well, one kilometer away. And I'm just going to commit. I kind of have to. Because otherwise the tickets are going to run down. That's kill number 9. And that's going to be the game. I did kill 11 enemies as you can see there. I killed 2 SU6s. I was trying to bait them out by shooting some of the ground units. And most of the planes to stop some ticket bleed. Bait them out. It didn't really come out. And that was because the Key 94 was waiting for the B6 to repair. Which I wasn't aware of at the time. I pitch up for an FU4B. Kind of the same deal as that Spitfire. And we are going much slower. So we cut inside of this loop. We shoot at them. We miss again. Unfortunate. And this was also something I mentioned in the defensive flying guide I made the other day. Because I'm a little bit further behind him. I need to pull much less to get my guns on him. If he was closer, he 100% would have outclimbed me. He would have stalled above me. The thing is, because I have a little bit of range, I have a little bit of speed. All I have to do is pull up a slight bit. And you need to cover a lot of distance at like three to 400 meters to actually pull up out of my guns. And that's simply because if I need to pull like 5 to 10 degrees, you need to cover a lot of distance at like four to 500 meters. Whereas if I'm going the same speed, like 100 meters behind you, you need to pull a lot less because I, if I lead one meter, and you'll see this when you have like a very long pull, if you move it a little bit at the handle, it's gonna move a very big amount at the end of the stick. Whereas if the stick is very small, if you want to make the end of the stick move a lot, you also need to move the stick a lot, if that makes any sense. I explained it a lot more in depth in the defensive flying guide video, but the point I'm making here is pretty clear, I think. And that's triple kill onto the next double kill, which are two Spitfires that are essentially stall climbing. And that's the beauty of an air spawn. Very often you run into people that are not really paying attention. So we dive towards the middle of the map. We notice an A6 and 5. We shoot at him. We get a hit. I'm running AP belts here. That's why that basically did no damage. He just got over penetrated. Shell flies right through him. But I have enough calories here to just fly away from him. Look how much faster we are. We were coming in with like 700 speed. So A6M is nowhere is doing nowhere near that. So we go straight up. If he takes his bait, he simply dies. And if he doesn't, well, I can keep doing this until he starts out climbing me. But by the time he starts out climbing me, he should be completely out of calories as well. So he pitches up. I go horizontal for a little bit. And just as I pitch in, and we are about to shoot him down, I get an email. Like, really? Now? You email me like twice a year and you have to do it when I'm about to kill someone? Luckily, we set this guy up in a way that it didn't really matter. Because he was already stalled out. He couldn't really go anywhere. And that's what I mean with if you fly well... Or at least if you fly to the situation well. It doesn't matter how bad your aim is if the guy is going 200 kilometers an hour. And here we are at the end of the game. And there's four guys camping the airfield. Very cool. And the FTG decides to finally come out a little bit. So we pitch him up. We turn into him. And of course then the zero instantly thinks. Oh I need to take this fight. So I'm just going to shoot at him. See if I can scare him away. And the second I do so. I'm going to turn around and see if I can drop on the F2G. Because the F2G here is the bigger threat. The A6M3 here is extremely slow. And I probably could have tried to pull into him there. But I wouldn't really have gotten a shot. Luckily he pulls the other way. He turns in a little bit too late. And the F2G at this point is going way too slow. They then proceed to camp the airfield for another 3 minutes. And I eventually die. Because well, AA. Very cool, have to break off every engagement I was going to win. Here comes another F2G, we go head on with him, we go up, and he doesn't have anywhere near the speed to contest us. We drop the throttle a little bit to cool the engines down, we drop the flaps a little bit to pull into him, and we are just gonna slowly pull in. We are diving, we are picking up speed, and we are just cutting inside of the loop. Click once, click twice, down goes the laser beam and here are the few so some of the head-ons that you are kind of forced to take because there's an f8f coming in we are going fast but not extremely fast our engines are about to start overheating so i need to cool them down a little bit if i dodge this head-on he's going to commit i know he will it's an f8f and it's probably a 1b if i turn the weapon and i'm shooting at him i notice his guns i dodge him 
And I kill him a little bit late. I normally don't like sticking that long. But this time I felt like I had no real choice. And then we go ahead on with the Tempest. We shoot at him. We dodge. He doesn't dodge. Look at that. He does dodge finally. And then he thinks about pulling in last second. I'm not sure why people do that. We then get slapped by the Hornet. Because, well, the Hornet is just this thing, but better. He comes underscore, underscore, door, underscore, 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 underscore. We miss him. But luckily, he's in a sea fire. So it doesn't really matter. We are just going to outrun him here. And we are just going to reel in this FU4B. We are eventually going to catch him. Because he is just not paying attention. And I can shoot from a little bit of a longer range here. But why would I? This guy starts moving. It doesn't really matter. And if I shoot from too far away, I actually might give him a little bit too much of an opportunity. Because if you start dozing at like 1 kilometer, 1.2 kilometers. And at these speeds, I'm pretty confident I can hit them. But there's no need. I'm just going to get a little bit closer. And if I miss them, I can follow up very easily. And there is nothing he can do. Whereas if he starts pulling into me at like 1.2 kilometers, he might be able to get away with it. And we don't want that. A C5 then breaks off. We go up and over. We're going to drop right on top of him. And we are going to try to slam that door. We're diving on him. Coming in pretty fast. He rolls the correct way. But I'm just going to stick. Because why not? I pull back in. And he's just rolling around. He might also need to watch that defensive flying guy. He's just turning around. He's not looking at what I am doing. He's just rolling around. Slamming the keys on his keyboard. It doesn't really accomplish much. Because if I just keep my plane in the middle. You're eventually going to, going to roll into it. I then notice the FU running down the Tau 152. And we are going to pull back into him here. Or onto him for the first time actually. I'm going to make sure that the task survives a little bit. So we click on him. And down goes Super 40 Gaming. RAR XD. So we switch on over to the FU on the other side of the map. And I notice that there's an f 8 f behind us. Now I'm not sure if he actually sees us at this exact moment. But I need to kill this FU. And I'm going to make sure that I'm going to kill him in the head on. Except I actually missed despite the FVU just committing to us. And this is a fight I can win. But I'm going to get exactly one turn to do so. And I wanted to go straight up here. But I heard something. And I thought it was the F8F. So I'm a little bit scared here. And I'm kind of forced in taking this downward spiral. And I think oh, I got him here. But I miss again. So we go up. And guess what? It's not the F8F. It's a goddamn AI that just tricked me. I thought it's a plane coming in. And it is. But it's an AI. Luckily we have a little bit of position and energy. He does not. So we can just pull into the head on. And that looks like a full commit. But he doesn't have the energy to actually pull into it. So he just stalls in our guns. We shoot him down real quick. But arguably that is a little bit lucky. If I had missed him there. If he had a little bit more energy. And I was forced to break off from the head on there. I probably still would have taken it. Because if I don't kill him in the head on there. I just die. The energy advantage that I had was completely nullified at that point. He turns much better. His guns reach a hefty long range. So what can I do? Nothing. So I'm kind of forced to take it anyway. Luckily he didn't have any speed to begin with. So it didn't really matter. And I can just stick to him. FNF is then on the Tal 15 that we saved earlier. I thought the FNF was going head on with us. He wasn't. I was going to dodge it because we are right next to a teammate. And the FNF is really hellbent on killing the Tar. So I'm just going to send it. I'm going to sit on the 6. He decides a little bit too late to start turning, but it doesn't really matter. It's 2v1 here. If I miss him, the Tau 152 will just clean him up. Tau 152 says thanks again. So we hit him with the T41 again. With a full caps, because my, my view key changes on caps lock. So I very often end up with caps lock enabled. Extremely annoying. But you know, it's something that's very close to my fingers. So it's very easy to access. Sure, it's annoying when you're typing. But luckily, I don't have any friends to type to anyway. So I've seen FAD2 and I'm a lot faster than him. But I'm kind of in that speed range where he's going to be in that head-on for a very long time. So I decide to just put all my speed or all my altitude into speed. And now I can dodge the head-on. And because I was so much faster coming into that fight. And I pick up the speed a lot better. Even though he's trying to run away now. I'm going to end up catching him. And that's just the beauty of energy. I messed all my speed by diving. He tries to run away because he dove on us. And guess what ends up happening is, well, you're going to end up actually getting caught. And I'm not really in a hurry here. This guy is completely dead. So I'm just going to keep clicking until he finally falls apart. And then I see the PB4Y. So I'm going to turn around for him. And see if I can kill him. Or if he's going to get a funny cut for the end of the video. Just gaining some distance on him. 
And all I have to do now is cut off his flight path. And we're gonna click him out of the air at like 1.3 kilometers. Just kidding. I can't aim. So we, we adjust the shot. We shoot him again. And down goes the privateer. I then just dive to the deck. And nothing else happens really in this game. Thank you all for watching. Feel free to stick around. See you in the next one.